Hey nerdlings, Nick Lotus 84 back with another episode of Asagao Academy with Ultimate Carl. Hey. And we are on day three and it's lunchtime. We just finished class. We we kinda we kinda got in trouble with the teacher because we were watching PBG play soccer out the window. But other than that, pretty pretty smooth class period. Nobody said anything about the ice cream. Ugh, that lecture was so boring. Mai walked beside me, a tray in her hands. We were shuffling through the cafeteria, trying to find a seat. Didn't you say that yesterday? Probably, but it's true for today, too. Samurai death battles are boring? Anna, help me. I'm gonna die of boredom. Bad end. <laughs> Bad end. We have an assignment to keep us busy, Mai. We already have work to do? How did you not hear that? Baked. <laughs> Mai sighed dramatically, then leaned to the side and rested her head in the crook of my neck. I reached up to pat her head a few times, but she straightened before I could do it. Oh god, Hana. Paul's walking over here. He's looking at you. Does he look angry to you? Why is he coming over here? You think he's gonna kick you again? Whoa, did he fucking like fly and kick you? He did. I thought he, just, I think, I thought he just like ran into you. I think it was supposed to be like a ballet leap and he kicked her. Uh -oh. The same Paul who humiliated me last night strode towards me. I instinctively backed away, but he kept coming closer. I'm glad I found you. He didn't look angry to me. In fact, he was giving me an odd lopsided smile. Man, yes, yeah, more serious better minds. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, okay, I'm, now I'm, I'm going to give him, like, super dreamy. I wanted to make sure you weren't hurt or anything. You ran off before I could properly apologize. I looked down at my feet. It was embarrassing enough that I ran off crying like a little girl, but to know that I made them feel bad was even worse. At the same time, the image of my ruined uniform popped into my mind. I couldn't tell whether I was more angry or embarrassed, or whether I was feeling something else entirely. I got you pretty bad, didn't I? I think I ballerinaed too hard. Okay, so yeah, that's what, he wasn't trying to like drag and kick her ass into the Milky Way or anything. <laughs> no, he wasn't trying to come a mare or anything. He tilted his head to the side. <laughs> it's a shame you're not wearing the uniform from yesterday. I like the pink splotches on you. You matched your hair. A deep, sick feeling crawled up from my stomach to sit in my throat. <laughs> I like disheveled girls who spill things on themselves. <laughs> My dumb, stupid hair! Everywhere I went, people made fun of it. I thought the normal boots guys were different, and he was trying to apologize. How could he say something like that to me? Not for the first time, I thought of dyeing it a different color, but quickly dismissed it. Paul was waiting for a response, Mai giving me a quick nod as if warning me not to mess this up. I mustered up my best smile, hoping it was at least somewhat convincing. It's okay. I, I'm, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I'm more than happy to pay for the dry cleaning. Josh and Nick and I feel really bad about everything. We never made a girl cry before. Uh. Well, not by physically injuring her, I guess. Oh lord, what does that mean? <laughs> what else has he done to make girls cry? I kind of want to bust into, like, full-out, oh, yes, Metaton voice yeah. room now. By mentally injuring them. Yeah. Thank, thank you, but I was just going to scrub it in the sink. Dad and I could never afford things like dry cleaners, so I was surprisingly good at hand-washing things. Hmm. That thing's going to need more than just hot water and soap, trust me. Tell you what, I have a friend who's a natural with that kind of stuff. I'll ask her to get the stain out for you. Just meet me later and bring your uniform, okay? I'll try not to kick you this time. Without giving me time to say yes or no, he nodded and turned to leave. He spun quickly back around. I flinched. Uh, are you and, uh, my, right? Do you guys have a table? The cafeteria is pretty full right now. You can sit with us if you want. Just, just for today. Yes! Yes, we'll go. Uh, right, Hana? I, uh... Lunch with the Normal Boots Club? 
Maybe, maybe I really could become friends with them. And then no one would bother me again. Not about my hair or the ice cream incident, yeah. right? Yes, please. All right. All right. Follow me, ladies. <laughs> ladies. Ladies. Now I'm now I'm like going into guy voice. <laughs> hey, Lee, what's shaking? <laughs> he led us to the middle of the. I don't think I've heard his dub voice. Oh, it's he sounds like a he sounds like a game show host. <laughs> Awesome. But it's but it's glorious. Yeah. He led us to the middle of the cafeteria where the normal boots club sat with a table all to itself. Hey, you found her! You're Hannah, right? I nodded, blushing as I took a seat at the edge of the table next to Paul. Mai forced herself between Jared and PBG. Her eyes were only a few sparkles away from forming huge hearts. Real subtle. Let's see, I don't know if I had a good voice for him or not. So, Hana, we saw that you were upset and we're all worried. Are you feeling better? PB I'll have to get a better feel for the characters first. Yeah. PBG looked at me, clearly concerned. My heart was beating hard against my chest, but I wasn't sure whether it was because I was nervous or because the sad look on his face made me want to give him a hug. Oh, Aww. so whoopee. Or maybe it was because I was about two inches away from Paul and only an arm's length away from all the other guys. As I tried valiantly to open my mouth, whispers sped around the lunchroom. Look at those girls over there! Who do they think they are? Who do are? they think they are? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you can be snooty girl. How come, how come they get to sit there? Actually, I'm just thinking of like Teen Girl Squad. I know! I was sent by and notice me! <laughs> I wish Senpai would notice me. I mean, characters get all the luck. Suddenly, my thoughts turned dark. Could it be that by getting close to these guys, I was setting myself up as a target instead of getting protection? Protection from what? There's not a hit yeah. out on you. <laughs> my thoughts... The Germans. <laughs> my thoughts spun in my head. I was suffocating. PBG was still looking at me. Even more worried and wobblicious than before. I'm... I'm fine. Thanks for your concern. Please don't feel bad. It was my fault for getting in the way. I'm sorry for causing such so a was. scene. I should have controlled myself better. I hung should my Should have dodge rolled. Obvious. Abused my iframes to get out of the way of the kick. Totes. I hung my head. Wasn't sure how to act around these guys, so I defaulted to extremely polite. My father would have been proud. Hey, Hana, don't apologize. It was Paul's fault. Right, Polly? Nick shoved Paul, who looked exasperated. I apologized as best I could, Nick. Give me a break. It was a relief that PBG wasn't staring at me anymore. Almost no one else was paying me or my any attention. Shane, however, was still shooting me quick, suspicious glances. It was almost like he didn't want me there, and I felt uncomfortable. And now How do you, you like it here so far, Hannah? Hannah? Gonna keep saying Hannah. <laughs> Good. How about you? Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. I mean, I like it here. Thank you. Gerard smiled at me, then turned away. I picked at my food. The guys were all wrapped up in their own conversations, and Mai was busy preventing hyperventilation from being so close to Jared. I can feel his body heat. Oh, God. <laughs> I love it. Oh, dear. You doing okay, Hana? A smiling satch turned to me. I know we can be overwhelming. You're fine, right? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Thank you. Um. I winced. Sorry, I can be a bit of a wallflower. Eh, flowers again. Yep. No need to apologize. I'm sure we've all been wallflowers before. He finally took his hand off his glasses. Yeah, he did. Oh, God, I didn't notice. He has another arm on his glasses, after all. But that reminds me, the flower festival. Uh-oh. He turned to the group, addressing them all, and as if on cue, they all suddenly turned to pay him attention. Who are you all taking this year? 
Right, the flower festival. Miss Shizuka mentioned it before. What is the flower festival? No one's explained it to me yet. <laughs> that portrait of her is just the... I don't know, just about her eyes, like, not sure if want. <laughs> just really funny. Yeah. Hmm. It's basically just a festival. Didn't you have those at your old school? We did have festivals at my old school, but they were basically just 40 kids grouped in one room sharing snacks they brought from home. <laughs> so it's like American school. Yep, potluck. That's the closest we had. Yep. Well, we had something kind of like them, but I stopped going. Aw, why not? They're so fun. I didn't really want to answer. There was no way I could say, well, my friends turned on me, so when I, when, when I went, people pretended I didn't exist. She does have a tragic past. God, yes, a super tragic past, but Mai was waiting for an answer, and everyone was looking at me. I'm just... dot, dot, dot... not into that stuff, I guess. Also, I killed some people. <laughs> oh, well... Maybe you'll like this one more. If we can get Shane to go with us, totally. <laughs> Ow. The flower festival happens all over Japan this time of year, but it's a big deal in Higanbana. That's the town right next to Asagao. There's apparently some kind of myth about flowers that's somewhat important. Supposedly, the founder of Higanbana was an old man who got lost from the mountains and almost died of thirst. This flower spirit came to him and offered him help in return for his vow to protect her home. He agreed, and she drained herself of all of her water so he could drink. The man founded Higanbana to watch over the meadow, in which he met the flower. In some versions of the myth, the man and the flower spirit fell in love. It's a truly romantic festival. One may hope to find someone with which to make a vow of eternal love, just as the man and the spirit did, and to live on to protect the one they love. Aww. So romantical. Jared winked in my swooned. So during the day of the flower festival, there's a lot of stalls set up, and you can go play games and eat food or go flower viewing. Then at night... There's a special meadow over by the temple where you could go watch the flowers, and there's a bonfire and dancing. Oh, it's a lot of fun. We look forward to it every year. Asagao sells paper flowers and a little booth to raise money for the school, too, so there's usually a big volunteer drive beforehand for people who are good at origami. Origami? I'm good at origami. Told you some thousand paper cranes, man. Oh, man. <laughs> really? Shane is, too. Maybe you should work together. Aww. Yeah, there's our in. We're gonna make paper <laughs> we're gonna make paper flowers with Shane. Yeah. Shane gave me a tight lipped smile. Somehow I didn't think that would be happening. Hey. Hey, speaking of, I swear you rejected ten girls last festival season. <laughs> I mean, that's nothing compared to me, naturally, but there were so many girls with broken hearts, even I couldn't mend them all. Oh, Jared, you're such a pure heart, giving of yourself <laughs> to cheer up all these sad girls. You still hung up on your English girlfriend? Oh, there's an X in the picture. J Shane flinched, visibly taken aback. Then he shrugged. His Russian mail order waifu? <laughs> I don't talk to her anymore. Oh, Shane. I just want you to be happy, that's all. And we're gonna leave off right here for now next time we will continue this conversation about the flower festival and see where it goes and and see if we can get shane senpai to go to the flower festival with us until next time thanks for watching and see you then later